Theater of GR presents the No Fucks Given Hour with your host, the Unknown Factor. Yo, this is the No Fucks Given Hour. Check it out. I'm the Unknown Factor. No Fucks Given. What we doing? Jay Bullet. What we doing? We're not giving no fucks, but that's what we're not doing. <laughs> I don't know, man. I see you, you give one. I did give one. I had to let that bitch out today, man. It, it was just, it was pressing on me, so I had to let it out, but that's the only one they were giving. It happens. It happens. So so just know, yeah, right. get over at the no fucks given hour, occasionally, occasionally, there does have to be a fuck given, because you know. Sometimes you just gotta deal with shit, and you just can't let it slide, cause motherfucker. Yeah, you don't wanna go to jail, and you don't, you know what I'm saying? You don't get trouble. Hell yeah, dog! So many motherfucking. Reasons. I'm doing just fine, not on probation. Shit, me and you both, dog. I'm telling you that right the fuck now. I'm gonna be on probation. I swear to God, if my motherfucking computer don't start agreeing with me, that shit was starting to piss me off. Yeah, for real. I know it's that technology, bro. Hey, that shit gets frustrating, for real. It does. Uh, they're gonna get, they're gonna get us all addicted to it, and then one day it's gonna take it away. No, no man. Like, what, what do we do now? No, see, <laughs> I don't think that's what's gonna happen. I think we're all gonna get addicted to it, and then someone's gonna make something that is more intelligent than us, and they're not gonna be able to figure out how to switch it off. And the second you can't figure out how to switch it off. You have a fucking problem. Yeah, right? I mean, I'm just saying. You know, that's where you really got to start checking yourself. Check it out, though. Like I said, we're just chilling out tonight, fucking around, as always, because that's what we do. No fucks given, you know. We can do a little smoking, chief out, fucking see what's up. We got it's Friday. Yeah. Oh, yeah, shit, it's Friday. Yeah, we ain't even usually on today, you know. We supposed to run on Sunday, no, Monday, and Tuesday. Occasion. Yeah, see. But check it. We, but, but man, I had to come on Friday because because uh, my wife hit up this cat and he's like, yeah, man, I totally like to do it this day. And my wife told me who it was and the day he wanted, and I was like, yeah, go ahead, fuck that, I'm totally down. To yeah, have do that. Yeah, whatever show. he wants. Yeah, like you give fucking trilogy that fucking day. We'll make that shit go, and we'll make it fucking roll, right? Because that's what's up tonight on the No Fucks Given Hour. We got Trilogy, right? What you know about that? That motherfucker just got running on a fucking in the casket factory tour with motherfucking Blaze and Lex the Hexmaster, right? I checked that shit out. That shit was crazy. Yeah, them motherfuckers put on a show. They did. Yeah, all kinds of shit. But I'll tell you what. Right now, we're just going to run into one of his tracks. I'm going to play that. Right there. And then we can come back. We have Trilogy on the line. We're going to pick his mind and see what's up. Yeah, that was that by Trilogy. This is the No Fucks Given Hour. I still am the unknown factor. I will continue to be. I still have Jay Bullet with me. I hope he sticks around. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I hope he don't ever decide to run off. Don't run off on me, dog. No, I'm good, bro. I'm good where I'm at. Well, you know the only place you could ever run off on me was the mainstream. Because I stay underground, right? And speaking of the underground, I got Trilogy. What's what's up, dog? Yo, yo, man, what's up? Not a damn thing, dude. We chilling, right? Just got done playing that. You got anything you want to say about that track right quick? Oh, man, that, that's a... You know, man, I did, when, I took, when I did that track, uh, I honestly thought it was just going to be a CD filler. And actually, Sammy was like, man, that's one of your good tracks. That's going to be on your set. You're going to be doing it live. And the day I did, I was like, no way, and now it's my opening track on tour, so. <laughs> nice. Hell yeah, man, hell yeah. Yeah, you gotta love when something like that happens. Like, oh, that'll be okay, and then it's yep, like, I oh, fuck yeah. Probably that diamond in the rough. Oh yeah. So, man, let's just get right into this interview, right? I'm just gonna start with some real basic shit with you, Trilogy. Like, how long have you been doing this? Oh, man, I like... Oh, just 15 years. Okay. Now, what made you decide to take the name Trilogy? And did you have names prior to that? No, uh, see, uh, my name was given to me uh, from, like, a, he's a friend of mine. He's passed away now. Uh, they're, they're a group out of Flint, Michigan called the Black Hippies. Gardamel and Cut, and Gardamel actually named me. And uh, so it just stuck from there. Hell yeah, man. That's what's up. 
That's what's up. Bullet, take a question. Yeah, dude. Um, so I know that you like producing uh, Sammy and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? What's what she like better, the performing or, or the producing? Uh, what, what do you mean? With her? Oh, yeah, or like in general. Oh, in general, what I like doing, I like performing. You like sure. performing? <laughs> yes, 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 for sure. Now, I'm curious on that note. What's your favorite kind of place to perform in? You know what I'm saying? Like, do you like a small, intimate setting, like a bar where you're real close to the crowd? Or do you like a fucking stage where you're up and above everyone and you can just see? see yeah, but, you know, that's, a, that, that's a good question. See, uh, I like a, I like a stage. I like a, you know, I don't like the, I, I don't mind bars. Don't get me wrong. But it's a, I like the personal setting, but I like the stages in the bigger places. Like, you know, five, six hundred people is like good for me. You know what I'm saying? Because that's, that's like so intimate, especially my last song. I get in the crowd with them anyway, so I don't want it to be too fucking big. Yeah, you ever afraid walking out into the crowd there was going to be an issue? Or have you ever had an issue, for that matter, walking out into the crowd during that last track? No, I've, I've never had an issue, and the only thing that I'm ever worried about is somebody trying to grab my mic and, like, wrestle my mic away from me. <laughs> but besides that, I mean, I've had no issues, and uh, but that's my biggest fear. I'm, I don't worry about I don't worry about anybody doing no stupid shit. I mean, it's all love. Yeah, actually, was talking to uh, Bulletproof and the Fool, and uh, Fool said that uh, security grabbed his mic from him one time. <laughs> yeah, they did. Yeah, they I, did yeah, I heard about shit. that. <laughs> yeah, they fucking straight walked up yeah. on stage and were like, pff, pff, "Fuck you, you ain't singing no more." And uh, fucking, yeah, Bulletproof and the Fool, they grabbed two other mics and kept going. So that motherfucker didn't do nothing. Just pissed a whole mother group of motherfuckers off. That's about it. But, yeah, you know, right? That's just a dick yeah. being a dick. What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's see, man. Well, you, there's nothing else you do. Grab a mic, grab another mic, and keep going. That's all you can do. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. I mean... You can't fucking let some dick security guard stop the fucking show. And that's the thing. Like, um, no, absolutely not. Yeah, the track they're doing was, uh, I don't care, call the cops. You know what I'm saying? So it's all about, fuck you, call the police. <laughs> and the security guard apparently was a former cop or something and took it real fucking personal. All right. Yeah. What are you going to do? I'll tell you, what's the weirdest situation you've had on stage? Like, you ever had a situation that you were just like, what in the fucking shit just happened? <laughs> yeah, the, uh, back from the dead to the uh, Blazing Boondocks, uh, uh, the boardwalk, uh, where is that at? Sacramento, I want to say. Uh, I'm pretty sure Sacramento, the boardwalk, that was the venue. And uh, I was on stage, and the fucking promoter was hammered. And I'm on my last song, and he comes out of nowhere on stage and, like, grabs me and starts dancing with me, jumps into the crowd. The crowd throws him back at me. I move, and he runs over all the back of the boondocks and blazes back on knock them both down. <laughs> oh. Well, then. Yeah, fucking drunken fucking guy, dude. Yeah, horrible. <laughs> See? That's why you fucking shouldn't drink like that, man. Like, I look, like, it's good to have an occasional drink, but I have seen so many motherfuckers at shows in the past two years that get to that point that it's like, dude, you should have stopped three drinks ago. <laughs> and you do Yeah, I've done no, that a few times myself. Fuck up, dude, the fucked up thing was he was graceful as fuck because when he jumped in the crowd and they threw him back on stage, he, like, was in the air and landed on his feet. It was, like, graceful, but then he just kept going into the shit. <laughs> See, it was grace, but a lack of the ability to stop his momentum. <laughs> it, that's what it was. He had no mo no ability to stop his momentum, and it was, he just, right into the whole everything. Knocked all the shit <laughs> down. Uh, <laughs> I kind of wish that's I could great. see that trilogy. That had to be kind of fucking funny to watch. It's got to be on YouTube somewhere. I wish it was. God, you would think, hey, look, if anybody listening can find that, that would be awesome. And I'll tell you what, right now, for yeah. anybody listening wants to call in, chat with us, chat with Trilogy, have a question for him, give us a call. It's 401-283-5695. PIN is 
eight nine right give us a call you can chat with trilogy figure out some shit about him maybe there's something you want to know i don't fucking i ain't gonna know or bullet ain't gonna ask you know who fucking cares yeah, I'll high myself. Know, call and ask because yeah we stone i don't know trilogy what's up brother? um now where do you live again say what where do you live again oh, i live in chicago chicago oh shit dog i did not realize you were that close to me like i really didn't that's that's fucking that's surprising. Yeah, because we actually, I used to go over to Chicago all the time, man. But I went over there for uh, Ring of Honor shows over in uh, Chicago Ridge. I can't remember the fucking name of the guy. Yeah, that, probably. that's. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I live right by Chicago Ridge. I'm like in Worth, Illinois. Like I, in, Chicago Ridge is literally like a mile away from me. <laughs> um, it makes me wonder if you've ever played. I don't know if this place does concerts though i know they did um wrestling shows uh shit what's the name of the fucking venue i swear to christ um oh shit my bad my cord don't go that far i'll check during the motherfucking next song i got a poster up in my room that's got the uh tickets from the conventions and whatever center and we'll fucking get back to that because i'm just curious if you've ever played that area um what do you how's the uh underground scene in chicago man uh, you know, I've been, I've only been like here doing music for like the past, like probably two years now. And it was bigger, like when I first started here and you know, to be honest with you, it has definitely fallen off here. <laughs> hmm. Like there, 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 there's, there's not a whole lot going on. Like there's only, there's like, honestly, the one people that, to the people that probably do anything like the smoke them records. Guys uh, out in the, uh, West Chicago, they're the only ones really doing anything out here, man. Nobody, nobody else is doing anything that I know of. Hmm. See, and Jamie it's starting to get like that a lot of places. Yeah, see, Bullet, didn't you? Yeah, man, it's like that down game? here, man. Yeah, it fell off, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we, like, going on here at all. like two, yeah, the local places like two years ago, we all used to do shows and like mm-hmm. local groups would come together and all their fans would come together. We have 100, 150 people, you know, packed in the mm-hmm. building. Oh, great shows, fun shows, you know, local shows. And the place closed and then everybody went their own way and people moved away. And yeah. now, like, it's dead here, bro. That's basically the same thing that happened here. Yeah, see, that's crazy because I've kind of heard that. Uh, happened in Indiana as well because I only started doing all this two years ago period man you know what I'm saying at any fucking level um but yeah it was right then that I started going to shows again which is what got me back into all this um but yeah the guys I've talked to that were have been in it for a while in Indy have said that it's seriously declined so it makes me curious man um is there just a decline in the general as far as for the support of local music is that just happening right now? No, honestly, I'm gonna hear. I'm gonna tell you what I think it is, and I'm sure a lot of people agree if they have no backbone to say it. But the music industry got too fucking clicky, man. Like mm. everybody's like nobody wants to share, uh, you know, like the the show. Everybody wants to be the person. Well, my fans can't be your yep. fans. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. If you, and then they tell their fans, if you're going to be, you know, listen to their music and don't come to my shows, don't support me, and then it ruins friendships and it just fucks shit up. Yeah, man. Look, and I've already seen that. That's fucking. I don't, what do you think? Yeah, we were just that, talking man? about that. Yeah, we actually. It's like, it's like there's a goddamn high school mentality trilogy. You know what I'm saying? Like you've got the jocks over here, yeah. and here's the fucking nerds, and here's the like, what the fuck? Who gives a shit? Aren't we all adults? Like, how old are you, dog? Because I'm 32. I'm 39. Okay, see, aren't we all fucking adults? Like, and I have seen... Yes, we are. Yeah, I have seen... Between the old schoolers like us and the new school as well, you know, I mean... There's there's a... a, I think so. No, bullet, bullet. I've seen 30-year-old motherfuckers doing just... I don't understand it, shit. Like, I'd understand it if it was coming from a fucking 15-year-old, but from an adult, like, I just don't get it. It it doesn't make sense to me, you know? And, I mean, hey, I've seen that in the world before I ever got in Abyss. I'm not saying, yo, fucking all rappers. It's just rappers. It's that's Because it, it's not, motherfucker. It's people, right? People are like... People, that. exactly. Right? 
I mean, people are clicky. Every place I've ever fucking worked, whether it was a <laughs> restaurant, a fucking call center, whatever, you know what I'm saying? They all, there were little clicks in fucking all of them, you know? And I yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. I think there was a point, man, I agree, in the rap game, um, in specifically the underground, where there was more of a family vibe. And it was, you probably experienced it, man, because you said you've been doing this 16 years, but I haven't. I just started. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. When I, yeah. man, when I first was doing music, it was crazy the support I had. I brought, I mean, we, me, me and the guy I used to rap with, the group that I started, man, we would bring 200 kids wherever we went in Michigan. Because I'm originally from Flint, Michigan. And, dude, we used to do shows all the time. We were 200 deep at these shows. And it definitely declined. <laughs> uh, hey, hey, real quick, just me and you are definitely getting into a subject that I like to get into later then. Trilogy, for real, based on where you're from. But we'll get that in into that at a later point in time because I don't want to get it that serious right now. Um, <clears throat> I'll tell you the thing with the whole, like like I said, the I feel like the family aspect. There are a lot of people you see that they're, they're say they're trying to bring it back, whether they really are or not. I can't vouch for them because I don't fucking know them, you know? Um mm-hmm. But I think a lot of that was lost, man, and I hate to say this, the moment all that shit happened at Psychopathic, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, when the, the, when yeah, Twitter yeah. ended up leaving and doing their own thing, yeah, it, yeah. That, it definitely, that put, a, that put a split in. Yeah, when that happened, Trilogy, man, it was, and, and it was, dude, it was slowly coming. And I think if you had really paid attention to those labels, you seen that one of two things was going to happen. Either ICP was going to be like, well, we have to take a back seat to Twisted because that's necessary right now because it fucking it just is. And listen, I have all the goddamn respect in the world for ICP for everything they've done, will done, and, and continue to do. I, I fucking, but I, I think it was just a point, you know? Like, and they definitely didn't, I know there were problems with they were getting pissed about how they were getting pushed and everything and all that, you know? But I think, like I said, it was a slow, because when the shit initially with Esham, too, and ABK, and they put that fucking diss track out with Lavelle, if you've seen all that happen, you know, I think it was, like, Psychopathic helped bring everyone together, and then when Psychopathic started to have problems, it looked like it made everyone look at it differently. And I don't understand why. Because, look, like I said, we're all fucking human. And look, ain't none of us meant to get along with everyone else. Because if that was the case, then we'd all just have a fucking big-ass orgy all the time, and that would be the planet. And it would be fucking fantastic. I and thought great. that's what we're supposed to do. Yeah, keep doing Oh, shit, I've been living wrong. <sighs> yeah, you wish. <laughs> I know, right? Trilogy, really, this motherfucker just over here, yeah, yeah, I wish that was the motherfucking case, you know, but, yeah, and I think, like I said, and I might be wrong, I'm just throwing out a fucking theory, you know, and I'm official Juggalo News staff, so Juggalo News is probably going to look at me and be like, you need to shut the fuck up, what the fuck are you saying over here, <laughs> you know, yeah. you know. Because for real, I am, so, you know, but I mean, it's just my honest opinion, you know, and I got love for everyone. I do. Like, I would bring... Much love. Yeah. If, if, your music is, yeah. if your music is good, I'll bring you on my show. No fucking problem. Because that's what it's about. Right? I just don't get all the hate, man. Have you... Like, how much of that have you experienced, dude? And do you experience more of that at a local level? Or, like, at a state-to-state level? Well, man, see, and that's a great question, too, man. Because when I first moved to Chicago... I got local hate because I was like the new guy, like trying to do the big shows that were coming through. You know what I mean? And all the like local established artists were like, man, who is this guy coming and trying to get on these shows? So I, I got a lot of that local hate. But then when I got past all that, I thought, oh man, it's done. Then I started touring and going nationwide. And then it was the locals at all these stops that you get hate from. Because now I'm where they want to be. They want to be opening for Blaze on all these tour stops. So it's a whole nother level of hate you got to deal with. Man, look, I fucking opened for Whitney Payton at the Emerson that you played, dog. And I would fucking happily 
open for you anywhere trilogy. I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Out of just love and respect. And I I don't give a fuck who you're bringing, who you're with. I would do it just because, one, I love hitting the stage. I've found something that allows me to play with a part of my head I've never been allowed to. And I want as much of it as possible. And And I've got respect for you and your craft, you know? And I don't see how motherfuckers don't look at each other that way, you know? I mean, I can see... Right, uh, and that's... You know, Go ahead, dog. Oh, yeah. So, you know, that, that's what I was going to say. You know, uh, like, when I, when, I show, when I show up, I'm always, like, in the crowd talking to all the locals. And I watch every local. When I'm on tour, I watch every local that's on. The only local I miss is the one before me because i got to paint up before I go on. But I watch every local because I show that support. And, you know, I try to get their CDs. And, they say, we, me and Blaze and um, Lex, we bought a lot of the local CDs that I picked up in the band while we were touring. Well, shit. I should have handed fucking Lex a copy of Unknown Factor then. I don't think I did. Well, you definitely should have because we probably would have bumped it. <laughs> God knows I fucking mm. handed that fucking CD out plenty when I was there. My fucking wi- My wife is my promoter and my manager because I'm a dick. And would piss everyone off if I had to do that. Um, so she does it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, dude, like, she got drunk and was passing out CDs at that show. It was kind of goddamn funny to watch Trilogy. <laughs> yeah. To the point where when I had Bulletproof in the Fool on last week, they were like, we were supposed to ask, wasn't somebody drunk at the Blaze show last week at the Emerson? I'm like, yeah, shut up. <laughs> motherfuckers gotta call me out on my own show dog that shit is rude you know I wanna know dude I've seen your face paint and I like your face paint how the fuck did you come up with that face paint oh so the way it was uh, I, did, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't start painting my face until the casket factory tour and it's cause I had a lot of pressure on me why aren't you painting your face you know are you gonna commit are you gonna do this and I was like, you know what, I'm going to try it just to see what people think. So the first time I painted just the left side of my face, I did a half a face. You know, and people were like, eh, you know, it's cool, blah, blah, blah. And I kept doing it, you know, trying to get it better. And uh, finally somebody was like, why don't you uh, quarter face? And I, and I was like, it was on Facebook. I was like, what's quarter face? And they explained it to me. So then I started doing it, and, you know, it stuck. I like how it looks. Yeah, dude, it looks good. It does. <laughs> Like, it's got a, I, I, I don't know, man, just real, I don't even know how to describe it. I don't know the word I'm looking for to, like, a vortex feel to it, I guess, kind of. Like, I don't know. It feels like it draws you in, you know? Like, and it's, it's fucking creepy. Why you got to have some creepy ass, I love how I'm at telling you why you got to have some creepy ass shit. <laughs> you see my mask, dog. My mask is fucked up, like, flat out. And that shit was hand sewn and hand painted like I was a goddamn madman because I am. So fuck it. That's <laughs> just what's up, right? Let's see. So how long you? When did you really start touring, man? You know, like as far as because I know you just got done yeah. doing the casket factory. So yeah, when did you really start doing that actively? Uh, I've I've always done like little tiny runs like my whole this my whole career. But it was never wanting anything significant. Um, my first like big tour was the Back from the Dead tour with Blaze and Boondock. Okay, yeah, I mean, I want to say I was at that fucking show. Is that terrible? Truly, I swear to Christ, the past two years have passed in such a blur with everything that has happened. That <laughs> I, I can't even remember all the artists that I have seen and... It's it's absurd. It really is, man, as far as just <laughs> locals. And, because I had fallen off the underground scene, man, about 10 years ago, you know? And I feel like I'm rediscover, well, like rediscovering the underground almost 10 years later. Because there's so much new shit that I did not know about. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah I did see you at that show. Um, and it was the first time I'd ever seen you with Blaze and the Casket, or Blaze and uh, Boondocks. Uh, and wasn't that about yeah. two years ago? Yeah. <laughs> hey, tr- <laughs> no, it was, that was the show. It was last year. It was it was last year. Oh, see now. It's two years ago. It was last year. Oh God! I wish my wife and was in here. I'm 
Well, it, like the the, the uh, it, we were in, and we were at the Beecher's Lounge in Ohio on March seventh last year. Now, did you guys play the Emerson? So it, yeah, we played the Emerson last year. It was a okay. couple days after. It might have been. I think it was right after the Beecher's. So it must have been like March eighth, probably last year. Okay, now, now I'm trying to. Fuck, I think I was at that show, but no, that wasn't the show that I was thinking it was. See, you ever have that problem out of curiosity, Trinity, especially with you torn to where shows just start to blend together and you're like, fuck, what venue was that? And, well, obviously you do as far as that, but does that ever become a problem? Uh, not yet it hasn't. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> What's your favorite state to play? Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> If wow. you want to plead the fifth, I will accept that answer. Well, I just, I got a lot of, like, good people in a lot of different states. So, you know, to just pick one, you know, I mean, honestly, you know, but my home state, Michigan. Man, see, you said that, and now I've just, because cause ever since you said you were from Flint, Michigan, I've just had this question in the back of my head. Because, uh, Trilogy, I like to bring this up on every show. I've missed it on a couple but I really like to make it a fucking point to bring this shit up because I think it's important and it's not being spoken of enough, which is the issue in Flint, Michigan with water. Uh, what's your opinion on yeah. the whole situation? Um, and man, I'll tell you what, it's, it was a problem way, way, way before, I mean, anybody even thinks it was a problem. I mean, uh, I, my whole family still lives there. My mom, my dad, my sister, my brother, my oh nieces, my nephews, my daughter lives in Flint, Michigan. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I, that shit, when, when people, you know, people like talk about it, you know, they don't really understand like I do, man. It hits home for me because of my family being there. I mean, it's a fucking mess. It really is. Well, we got this presidential election coming up, right? Why do you think it is that that's not an issue in the debates? I'm, you know, honestly, because there's probably a lot more cities just like Flint that's just not on the news. But, see, do you really think so? Because I'll tell you my problem with the issue in Flint, Michigan, more than anything, is I know there are other places. Like, if that shit happened in Beverly fucking Hills, you can't tell me it wouldn't be fixed in a week or less. Well, it, no, that's the thing. It would never happen in Beverly Hills because they got enough money to treat the pipes. So that doesn't happen. So that's what happened. If somebody just got cheap and slit and then put the money on something else instead of using that stuff to treat the pipes. That's what happened is they stopped treating the pipes. So ostensibly... Well, everything in the government shit. is, you know, you know, everything's sold to the lowest bidder, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's bad that they do it that way and they don't base it on fucking work ethic because, sincerely, that's just... You fuck all kinds of shit up that way. But hey, you know what I just noticed? I noticed what time it is. Hey. Did you know what time it was? Yeah, it's 840. This is your system. Yeah, look. I don't, I don't know if you know Trilogy, right? But we got a little thing we like to do over here at this motherfucking show. We call the motherfucking No Fucks Given Hour. And that's we like to take the 840 double toke break, right? Which is, we just play us two tracks that are highly smoke-related. And then we fucking sit and puff a little goddamn bit. And it is 840. And if y'all want to puff a bit with us, yo, join us. Right? I hope Trilogy will. Right? Spark something. Oh, no, I'm about to smoke. <laughs> Hell yeah. So check it out. Check it out. Puff, puff, and pass, motherfucker. By potluck. Check this shit out. We'll be right back. A little bit higher. Like motherfucking giraffe pussy. Huh? Huh, boy? Mm. I need a stoner, bitch. Yo, 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 we're back. Welcome to the No Fucks Given Hour. This is your host, Jay Bullet. Um, our No Factor is still partaking in his double tote break. And uh, we still have Trilogy live on the air. Trilogy, what's up, bro? Yo, what's up, guys? Not a damn oh, thing except Did I you enjoy love your uh, tote green. break? Ah. Sorry, y'all. I just had to cut in. I'm still break, finishing. Man. I'm still finishing my break. <laughs> oh, look. So am I, dog. Yeah, we're gonna keep going. That was just the eight forty. We, 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 
Yeah, we say 840 double toke break. We just keep token until we fucking <laughs> done with the show. I don't know what the fuck I'm... Eh. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's what's up. So, man, I got to know next, dog. For real. So, we've gotten into quite a few things with you. I want to know what inspired you to start rapping. And then what inspires you to go horrorcore, man? Well, uh, what inspired me to uh, start rapping, is, uh, it, it was just, you know, it, it was the style of music I listened to, you know, like I, I liked hip hop growing up and uh, it's just something that I always wanted to do and I really didn't know how to do it and I uh, finally got a karaoke machine and bought a tape from uh, Kmart with an instrumental on it. I don't even remember the name of the first instrumental and I really just wrote to it and that's when I started recording on a little karaoke machine. <laughs> wow. Nice. Now... When you say you listen to rap, like what rappers really would you say were your biggest inspirations? Oh, like LL Cool J was like, like back when I was coming back to I like really started like liking in hip hop. Oh yeah. So what took you the horrorcore route? Oh, uh, you, you know it's see honestly you with ICP you know. way oh, okay. I everybody, like everybody ICP I, that's what started it for me. But honestly, uh. And so, you know, when I first heard Hatchet Warrior with ABK, that's when I knew I was like, man, that juggalo is the route I want to be. <laughs> that's what I would, that's the route I wanted to take. And that's yeah. when I started, you know, building that fan base. <laughs> Hell, I figured with you being where you were from, man, you were going to be like Esham or fucking Nottis or somebody like that. Well, yeah, 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 of course, Esham and Nottis. I mean, I, Nottis honestly was like my first concert I ever went to. <laughs> oh, shit, dude. Seriously, that's but, fucking awesome. I mean, yeah, yeah, at the network in Flint. It was, it was like an old, old bowling alley, and they turned it into a concert hall for a minute. It was called the network. Yeah, that's where I seen them. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Then you know who. Uh, and then they, I, is? I've opened the food shop so many times. What was that? Uh, you know who Poe Hussein is? Yeah, yeah. I, I did a show, I've done a few shows with Paul. Yeah, man. We've actually had him on. That is a cool motherfucker right there. Yeah. Yeah, so that's so you and him. Have, have you you guys got a track? I'm curious. That would I would like to hear that. No, we don't have a track. <laughs> oh, hey Poe, if you're listening, I, don't know like, why I, we say, don't. I say you two should do a track. What do you think? Yeah, I, I for sure think we should. Yeah, because like yeah, definitely that the, the boys of Michigan come together and shit, man, for that for that flat shit, man. You know what I mean? Hell yeah, dude. Do a fucking song fucking tearing into the assholes causing that goddamn problem. Because for real, y'all are mutually fucking pissed about it. Because I'm telling you, dude, when I had Poe on and I got into that issue, for a moment, I was like, I'm going to give him a fucking heart attack. He's really getting pissed. Yeah. Like, it was, yeah, it was bad, dude. But, ooh, ooh, yeah. Um, what, man, what's your favorite Joker's card? Um, I man, I don't know. I because awesome. I, mean, I I mean, I don't know. I just I can't pick one honestly because I like. I there's a couple. Of, I like a couple different ones. Hey, trilogy. In my opinion, that is the appropriate true drug juggalo answer. Is uh, dude, fuck you. I, I mean, I it's, it's the one. honest truth. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I dude. It, it, it's just I, I like I like you know I like so many songs on each each one of them. I mean I just you know I just can't pick one. <laughs> Ooh, well then let's really put him in a bind. Hey, bullet, you want to bind up trilogy a little? Yeah, that's what we do, man. All right, we're gonna get a little Fifty Shades of motherfucking gray up in this bitch, right? And wrap this some bitch up in hot seat, right? I'm stealing your shit easy. I'm sorry, right? But but it's just that's the way it went, right? So here here's a question for you, especially based on how you answered that. I'm gonna throw you on a desert island trilogy. Pick three CDs. It's all the music you got. Pick what? Three CDs. That's all the music you get. Three albums. The rest of your life. Get any album. Yeah, I don't give a fuck, yep. but you get three, and that's the only three albums you get for the rest of your life, like, period. Like, because you're on a desert island, and you're fucking just stuck there, but you have everything to run all this shit, but you just have these three CDs, and that is it. Oh, man, let's see here. Um, 
Uh, first, I would definitely go uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Thugs and Harmony, right. that shit is, uh, I gotta have that uh, Twisted Green Book. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Got, to, mm-hmm. got to have that. And, oh man, who else, what else would I take? You want to know what? Uh, Ishan Full Casket. Ooh. Ooh, Nice. Can I say, dude, I love that you picked the Twisted CD that introduced me to Ten Nine. Mm-hmm. Because that, uh, I don't remember what track it was by then, but, yeah, it was the track that they did on that CD that was the first fucking time I'd ever heard Tech 9 in my life, man. Hey, hey Bullet. <coughs> no. Tighten the strap. All right. Um, what three movies or TV series would you bring with you? Oh, a TV series, uh, Big oh, Bang Theory, that's my favorite. That Big Bang Theory, that's my fucking series right there. I love that <laughs> shit. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm more, I'm more of a series guy. You know, movies for me, you know, I used to do movies back when I was younger, but now that I'm older, I'm a series guy. I like watch, like binge watching shit. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, so, it, like I said, definitely Big Bang Theory, uh, Another one, I'm a Walking Dead fan, huge yeah. Walking Dead fan. So one would be Walking, another one would be Walking Dead, and then um, the third one would probably be The Strain. And a lot of people don't know about The Strain, but they need to look into The Strain. Because yeah, I see, yeah, I've seen a few of them. Mm-hmm. Hey, yo, trilogy, fucking, as Chris Hardwick would say, points, motherfucker, because those were all three excellent answers. <laughs> I'll say it, yeah, yeah, you're, you're, very, you're cool enough to hang out with me. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll tell you what then. Let's just let's just go into an off topic conversation. You watch The Walking Dead, you're a big fan. Are you up to date on it? Uh yeah, pretty much. You so you've seen the season finale? Yes, sir, I've seen the season finale. So whose head do you think got bashed in? Oh man, I don't know whose head got bashed in and I don't want man, it's gonna break yeah, well, yeah, yeah. whoever it is. Hopefully it's the new guy that's from Alexandria. I, yeah, I don't want to be him, but I hope it's him. You know who it is in the comic. It's going to be somebody big. Do you know who it is hey, in what? the comic book? Yeah, in the comic, yeah. that was no. Glenn. I can say what it was know. in the comic. You could go on fucking you know, you know, Google know. or yeah, all kinds of places and fucking. But they didn't, in the sh- <laughs> the shows played all kinds of shit different. So we, they could totally have done someone else, you know. Well, I mean, Rick didn't even have his arm right now in the comics. His arm oh, was yeah. already chopped off. Yeah. See, so that's what I'm saying. There's all kinds of differences. So it doesn't have to be the same character they killed. Though Robert Kirkman... I mean, and honestly, the, Go ahead. I, honestly, this will piss a lot of people off, but, you know, Daryl's not in the comics, so they could be getting rid of Daryl and then going back towards the comics for the rest of the series. Uh, man, I could see that. But I don't, I don't really think, hey, my bad, I hit the fucking mic stand with my bong. I apologize, y'all. <laughs> the truth is... Yeah, I would. Yeah, big, uh, you must be a Daryl lover. No, dude, look, I like that character because I, I, I like... Daryl, like, like, hey, I like Norman Reed. He broke his heart. He's going to cry. <laughs> Wait, you don't, you don't like him? Well, Why don't so you like Daryl? I love Daryl. Oh, okay. <laughs> I never said I didn't like Daryl. I was just teasing you for liking me. Oh, okay. But see, okay. See, I'm going to piss a lot of care. people off because I'm not a big fan of Walking Dead. I'm a Z Nation fan. What up, Trilogy? Hey, look, yeah, that's the shit, too. Hey, Chad, we got a caller right now. Who we got on the line with us? This is uh, Joe from Colorado. What is up, Joe? You got a question for Trilogy? Not much. What up, Joe? You bringing any Game of Two Man to April 14th Twisted? April 14th Twisted, yes. Yeah. You gonna have some gear this time? Yes, yes, I can't wait. Yeah, me and man, I was uh I sat at the last show uh for the casket factory. Yeah, yeah, that was a good time, man. All right, the junction's ready for you. What'd you do? Yeah, dude, I can't wait. Dude, I loved it. What'd you do? Sell all your shit before you got there, trilogy? Did I what? No, what did you do? Sell all your shit. The only thing he had uh with him last time was a uh, CD. Cause I'm ninety percent positive you had shirts when you were at the Emerson. Yeah, I had shirts. Yeah, because I was going to buy one, but they didn't have one in my fucking size. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, I Because, well, well, see, I, you know, I'm not a big baller, so I got limited supplies, you know. Right. I only have so many of, like, each size. 
And then Emerson's yeah. always at the end of the fucking tour, so that I sell out of shirts by the time I get to the end of the tour, and then I don't got all my sizes. Yeah, I feel you, dog. It's cool. Well, luckily, it's I'm cool. at the beginning of the tour. Yeah, yeah. It's cool, dog. It don't bother me that much, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I ended up getting some fucking badass fucking pins that were the uh, the twisted and blazed ones. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but when we get off, yeah. uh, when we get off tonight, message me your address and uh, I'll mail you a shirt. And your size. Your address and your size. I'll mail you a shirt. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, yeah, I got you on Facebook, Trilogy. Thank you. Hell yeah, dog. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I got you on there, man. <laughs> Yeah, you grew up. You grew up not too far from. You live not too far from where I used to live in Michigan. Where did you live in Michigan? I used to live in Midland. Oh, Midland. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I've been in Midland a lot. Hell yeah, hell yeah. So, man, I want to know, trilogy. Like, with you getting into this and being in it as long as you are, what is your honest opinion of the current state of the rap industry, both the mainstream and the underground, which are obviously totally goddamn different beasts. Oh man, see, uh, to me, honestly, mainstream is absolute garbage to me, man. It really is. There's, 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 it's, it's all dollar signs and uh, brainwashed people listening to that shit, man. There's no meaning into the music. That's why. I, that's why I like underground. That's why I'm always staying underground because we do the music for ourselves. And I mean, we tell story. I tell stories in my music personally. You know what I mean? Everything you hear in my rhymes. That's all shit I lived through. That's all shit I've done and I'm going through right now. You know what I mean? And that's why I'm, you know, I stay with the underground. Hell yeah. So what's your opinion of the underground scene at the moment, man? The, the underground scene we, yeah. uh, at the moment right now, uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, besides Magic Ninja and Strange, you know, there's really no other underground labels. You know, Strange is big. They're kind of teetering on mainstream, you know, being underground right now. But yeah. they're an underground mm -hmm. label, you know. Magic Ninja T Entertainment, they're underground. I think Psychopathic has fell off a lot. You know, they're still underground, but those three labels are really the real only big underground labels there are right now. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. with all these underground rappers out here flooding the underground industry, there's just not enough people, not enough places for them to call home. You know what I mean? So it's, it's a big oversaturation of underground locals right now. Man, it, you don't... Know, you know, there's nobody like me. I'm trying to build my own thing right now. I'm trying to build Trilogy Music and make Trilogy Music a brand name like Magic Ninja because we need other places like that. We need everybody to start doing their own thing instead of trying to jump on Magic Ninja, jump on Psychopathic. Everybody needs to focus on themselves right now, man. Yeah, I agree. See, but here's the thing, and I agree with that. You have to be able to focus on yourself, but at the same time... You've got to be able to be like, you know, check it. Uh, I got you and you got me. Like, I, I'm doing my music and I know you doing yours. But, yo, you want me to fucking lay a verse down for you? Fuck yeah. That's no thing. That kind of thing. And I think that's been lost a lot in the underground. And I think that used to be there more because you used to see it way more like 10 fucking years ago than you do nowadays. <laughs> Even yeah, at the level yeah, of like 10 years ago, they were, KMK. They, were, they were charging each other. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, back yeah. then they weren't charging each other. Now everybody wants mm -hmm. to charge each other to get on track. It's absolutely ridiculous. See, and I don't get that because doesn't it like look, if <clears throat> let's just say and I'm not I'm not dude, you're at a different level than I am. I understand that before I even make this statement. But let's just say it's you and somebody at that same level. You know what I'm saying? Like that's at that fucking and you guys both do a track together. Doesn't that mean that any fans that he has and any fans that you have are then going to intersect and hear the other? And that's a good thing for both of you. I don't understand how people don't get it. Yeah, that. absolutely. Yeah. Like, I'll fucking work with pretty much anyone unless... I mean, that no, dude. The FBI is not even coming out of my level. Me collabing with some local that I've never heard of, I'm still getting myself heard by whoever he's letting that song be heard. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I mean... It's, it, it's all about networking. See, that's why I, what I do is I have people, if they want to collab with me, they got to send me the track. I mean, I'm not going to say, yes, I'm going to collab with them right away because if they send me something and it's not good, I can't do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can't, like, do a verse on something that's just not good. But if it's something that I'm feeling, I mean, I'll, I do tracks for people. I have no problem doing that shit. Wait. 
trilogy. I know I said I was headed up to the studio tomorrow, and I don't intend to do anything tomorrow that has anything in relation to you, but expect a track from me at some point, dog. I promise you that. And I'd like to think I will try my best to make sure that when you get it, you're like, oh, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah. man. Send it through. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. And look, anybody fucking listening, you hear what Trilly just said? Like, send him a track. If he hears it and he likes it, he'll get on it. Like, and that goes for fucking, I mean, I know I got other artists fucking listening, and I know I got other artists that'll listen to this later. Like, that's that's the kind of fucking interaction I want to help create, even. Like, mm-hmm. you know, to where motherfuckers are working more to level up. People have those people, man. Yeah, and it's not about fucking give me money no dude i'll make money when i sell someone the merch or the cd or the song or something like that you know what i'm saying when i'm actually selling the product but that's me and you making a product together that we can put out if it makes money then we both fucking profit off of it you know i i god that's just right. been lost in society too though trilogy it really has well trilogy well you got any uh, special tracks you uh, haven't laid down yet that you're going to throw out for us uh, during this tour? Um, no, 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 not yet. Uh, actually, I, when I just got home off the Cask Factory tour, I've been in the studio, and I've got uh, like four tracks for the new album, but uh, I'm not going to do any of them live yet. Okay. Uh, well, you, uh, you're, doing the same, you're doing a different set than you did last time. Remember last time you could, you know, yeah, uh, your shit came up missing and you had to do it off of uh, waiting for the damn song to play. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because uh, somebody stole the iPod. <laughs> Fuck you, yeah. bastard. If, hey, let me tell you this. If whoever stole that iPod is listening, go... Fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, for real. Yeah. Fucking eat a dick for fucking fucking up his show for everyone else. That's what I'm saying. Like, what kind of motherfucker? You have no idea. He had, to, he had to wait a few seconds everyone. for the song to play. That's, that's yeah. That's yeah we had to we, we had to we had to switch to an MP3 player. That's why we had to wait. <laughs> Hell yeah! Well, I'll tell you what. He's like, what oh fuck! Do, I don't know what's playing. And so I'll tell you what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch to a little family, right? What's up? You got anything you want to say about this track trilogy? Oh, man, dude, I did this for the fam, man. I did this for the, my people, man. And this is what I think of fam. And, uh, you know, you know, family for life, man. Whoop, whoop. Hell yeah, y'all. Whoop, whoop. whoop man. Fucking no motherfucking guys. Man, no motherfucking gives. Pff, never mind. I can't speak. I got way too high. I <laughs> like you, like you, you, put a, hey, you put a best in one track, one track only trilogy, and that was till the day you die. Yeah, 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 until I die, man. That's my that's my shit. That's my favorite track. Oh, well, look. It we'll just shows that. how long you're going to do it for the family. Yeah, yeah, we'll get that shit. We'll get to that shit, y'all. Just to let you know, everyone listening, the track that he just mentioned, we'll get to that shit later, right? But for right now, listen to family, if I can get my mouse to work. Fucking shut the fuck up. Check this shit out. We'll be right back. Yeah, Check it out. Yeah, we'll yeah, buy buy it. It. <laughs> hour, right? For real. See, I'm making these motherfuckers crack up when we ain't even on the motherfucking air because I don't even give a fuck because that's what's up. Yeah, right? Because I'm the unknown factor, right? Right? We still got Trilogy, right? Trilogy. Pfft, trilogy. Trilogy. <laughs> there you go. It's a trilogy, right? Like Alien should have been because they never should have made Resurrection because that shit was shit because that's what's up. You know. What are you going to do? Fuck it. Bullet. Come Ask on. this motherfucker a question. Nah, damn move. Yeah, bro. Um, how, how do you uh, balance, you know, like the music and your family? You know what I'm saying? I know you, you're worried about them all, you know, over in Flint and everything. Like, how do you, how do you balance everything in your life? Well, uh, honestly, uh, biggest the biggest thing for me is uh, just getting away from Chicago and being able to, you know, tour, you know what I mean? And, uh, Mm-hmm. Have a strong homestead back here uh, in Chicago. You know, uh, besides that, you know, having a strong support at home here in Chicago. You know, my daughter in Michigan, I get her, you know, every summer. She comes and spends the summer with me because I can't have her any other time because when she's on break at school, I'm on the road touring. So the only yeah. times we really have is her summer break, and I don't really tour then. I do one-off shows, you know, here and there. But I'm always home, and I have her every summer. So I'm, you know, my daughter too. Right, right, right. You know, everybody, right. everybody, everybody else. You know, like my brother, sister, mom, dad. You know, I see them. You know, when I go and pick my daughter up, you know, I'll visit them. But you know, I really never go and hang out with my family. 
Uh, so, well, have they like supported you and stuff? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They definitely support me for sure, for sure. That's good, man. So you really do have the support of your family. Then, like, is when you decided to do horrorcore, what did they think of that? I mean, because I know it's obviously a section of rap that's looked down more than any other. Yeah, well, um, you know, with the, with the whole horrorcore, you know, it's I was honestly more horrorcore when I started. I have more, uh. My style, you can tell, is underground, and you can tell, you know, the underground, the juggalo background, you can hear in my style, but I'm I'm not really, I don't really rap the horrorcore stuff anymore like I used to. You know, once in a while, I'll get wicked on a track, you know, but a lot of my stuff is really, you know, real life shit that I'm dealing with at the time that really relates to people listening, man, you know, that's why I'm picking up a lot of my fans. You know, like that kid, the dude said, you know, dude, that till I die, that's my favorite <laughs> shit. Well, you know, that's a track, you know, I do, that's the last track I do. I go in the crowd with them, and, you know, it's about my life and being on the road, that song is. And it's, I'm going to do it till the day I die. And everybody feels that shit, you know. It's, you know, it's my style. I can't really say, you know, it's this style, that's it's my own style. That's good that you can say that, man, too, because there are very few people. I mean, it's it's hard, I think, to really find and develop a style and make it yours, you know, um, and to see somebody do that, I think is something that's it's good to see, to see that they're able to stand out because I mean, a lot of people doing this way and they, you can tell they're just ostensibly copies of other people. And I don't know if that's what they were trying to be or if it just happened unintentionally or whatever, but I mean, you can see it happen a lot. I'll tell you what else I want to know as far as... Interviews. Right, right. That's, well, that's the thing. I, I see that on the road a lot is uh, a lot of the locals I see, not that they don't do good music, but it's like they start rapping and it's like, oh, I mean, this is just another so-and-so. It's another so-and-so. You know what I mean? It just sounds like something you've heard before. Uh-huh. And that happens a lot. And I like to make my music to where it's like, this is something that nobody's heard before. Yeah, man, because, I mean, I agree, because I definitely, when I when I started doing this, I didn't want to, I wanted to, I, I had two goals, man, I wanted to make music that I enjoyed, and I wanted to, I wanted it to be different than the shit that I had heard, you know, um, and I think I've accomplished that, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, you know, my wife agrees with me, I know that much, but she's my wife, so, you know, she might just be agreeing with me because <laughs> she's my wife, what are you going to do? Right, but well, I'm not too. just along uh, for the ride, so I agree too. Oh right, well, so I don't know. I got some agreements. I think your shit's the shit. Just so we can point that shit out right quick, you know. Um, Definitely. But what I want to know, dude, for real, as far as the other thing about horrorcore, I'm curious. Why is it? Do you think that horrorcore is looked upon so negatively, and but the music that is sexual is not? But when you relate that back to video and make it, you know, like a fucking image, it's the opposite is true. You know what I'm saying? No, I don't know know what you mean by that. Oh, yeah, here. Like, the fact that we'll accept a horror film, like Jason fucking slicing the shit out of motherfucker and all kinds of blood and gore, but we won't show some straight, real graphic. Right? Yeah, as far as in video and shit, without making it a complete, total crazy issue. But if you look at it in the musical sense, it's opposite. When people start rapping about, you know, I'm going to fucking hack you up. Popping people and off and yeah, yeah. 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 But, yeah. But if they do the sex and talk about all kinds of bump grind, there's no kind of issue. Why do you think we've taken that stand, man? I just, when I see it, I don't get it. What's your opinion of that? I mean, I think that it's, Honestly, that, when it comes to that, I just think it's whatever somebody's picking at at the time. It's always going to be something. Somebody's always going to bitch and blame something about something. It's it might be sex you know, this year, but next year, I mean, it might be chopping people up this year, but next year will be the sex. Oh, you can't say this, you can't say that, but they won't care if you're chopping people up next year. You know what I mean? It's I think it's just something for them to pick at at the time. Ah, man. See, I don't know if I agree with that trilogy, and I only say that because, um, I, and I'm specific. I'm uh, speaking specifically of America when I say this. Like, if you look at the fact that the horror films we have, right, and then if you look at the fact that the films that are like French independent films and how sexual they get and how open they are about that, but they don't get violent. You see what I'm saying? 
But we've always had a stance against horrorcore to where it was bad. Even, like, from the moment it started, dude. And I don't think I have ever seen a time. The only time I can think of somebody being slightly accepted for saying some slicing chop shit was Eminem. And he always got shit and was always controversial, you know? I don't think there's ever been a time, musically, where that's been accepted. Am I wrong? I mean, I... It just it just depends on me. I mean, I mean, different people accept it, you know, and some people don't. I mean, that's just the way. Oh, I, no. Like I said, I just think it's like at, at stuff that say it's at, at the time. It's just like I said. Oh yeah, you know, yeah people yeah, take yeah. it at the time. It's going to be something. It's always going to be something. Okay, so you mean that more as a, far as a generational thing, then, right? <laughs> but I just I just mean it's it's always going to be something. Yeah. You know, it's. It, yeah, it is. It is unfortunate, man. Everyone, there. Yeah, can't please everyone all the time. And listen, I fucking frankly ain't trying to right, yeah, and, please and, anyone. And that, yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm. That's what I'm aiming for. You know, you can't please everybody all the time. It's always. It's always going to be something with somebody. Uh, I'll tell you, I got somebody I know. It's like hard to please, like a motherfucker. She's always just like, man. So what's up, Bubbles? Bubbles. Bubbles. Yeah, I'm sorry. Why, how are you not going to fucking... Yo. Oh, she's fucking my show up trilogy. I'm sitting here. She's sitting on the fucking line. I can oh, see her sitting I am there. So I try and bring her in. So and she's like, uh, just sorry. Me dead fucking air. God damn. Ask your question. Bro. I am so sorry. <laughs> just ask your question. All right. All right. All right. What's your favorite caller? No. Really? She what was that? What's your she favorite caller? Oh, my favorite color? Oh. Uh, yeah. Probably green. 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 Why? What motto? Why, why, yeah, why? <laughs> why? Uh, cause all my favorite things are green. Weave, money. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, what words do you live by each day? What was that? What words do you live by each day? Oh. Man, loyalty and respect. Right. You know, I just want to be right. like, are you going to throw in Hustle, and I'll call you John Cena like I did last <laughs> week to my co-host? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Trilogy. I apologize for that. I am a dick. It is known. Oh. You know, it's the one thing that is known about the unknown factor is that he's a fucking asshole. Whatever. <laughs> yes, you are a fucking asshole. See, they all know. But now that I got my troop together... We're going to play a game, Trilogy. We like to play a game over here we call Ma Bang, Marry, Kill, right? We're going to give you three names. Wait, 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 what? It's called a Bang. It's a what? It's a game? Yeah, it's a game. A yeah, game. We're going to play a okay. game, dog, right? It's called Bang, Marry, Kill. I'm going to give you three names. You got to bang one, you got to marry one, and you got to kill one. And as Bubbles should expect it. I got to bang one? Yeah, like yep. yes, you gotta, yeah, you gotta have sex with one, and then, and then bang, have... bang. I know I have to have sex with them. Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> All right, so check it. Like Sixty times. And and as Bubbles should expect, uh, we're gonna put her on the spot and be like, Bubbles, give me the first name, and don't make it shit this time. Though that shit was fucking hilarious. Um, shit. We're not going um. with that again. <laughs> Uh, I mean, we can go with an answer. Eddie Krueger's mom. Huh? Freddy Krueger's mom. Freddy Krueger's mom? Freddy Krueger's mom? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, asylum? Oh, hell. I'm definitely banging her. That's why I found the grip of her. All right. <laughs> so we got Freddy Krueger. Are you going to bang her before or after the rest of them? <laughs> so in that case. Wait, gonna... you got to. Wait, you got to. Huh? Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we're just going to stick with the theme. That was, a, that was a good theme we got going there, Bubbles. I agree. So I'm going to go with Carrie's mom. Carrie's mom? Yeah. Bullet, you're up. Well, you know, I got we got the big three, so I'm going to say uh, Jason's mom. That's what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> so that means I got to marry one of those two and kill one. And you got to bang the other. So you're oh, definitely banging. I already said so I'm banging Freddy's mom. Yeah, definitely banging Freddy's mom. Okay. 
I mean, no, it's definitely banging. And then we're, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna kill Carrie's mom. We're gonna marry Jason's mom. Ooh, I, man, I hope that don't piss the sun off. That's all I got to say, trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a big well, fucking problem. You, I, I'm, fuck, I'm fucked either way at that point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is pretty fucking true. Th- yeah, 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 you know. You know, yeah. But if you kill his mom is. to take her head, you could, like, make a mask out of it and be like, I'm a, you know, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> he, he is pretty goddamn ass, stupid, you know I mean? so I mean, it might work. I love how my fucking co-host Bullet is the one that took it that dark, but you know, hey, whatever. I want to go into something, man, because I know for a fact, Trilogy, you got some shit coming up, like, tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? Yeah, yeah, I... Yeah, I wake up tomorrow morning and I get on a plane and fly to Seattle uh, and get on the box for Twisted for the uh, U.S. Invasion Tour. Oh. Now, y'all uh, are yeah. coming to Indiana, right? Um, No, I don't, the Invasion Tour, it's not coming to Indiana. Oh, wait, no, that's the Canada. Yeah. Oh, wait. Um, we're, the closest, we're, we're coming to uh, uh, 20 Pontiac. You want to just, dude, if you want to just run through the first couple of dates of that, that way people know... You know what I'm saying? If you got them or know them. Um, I know uh, tomorrow we're in Seattle. Um, and then, uh, man, I can't, I don't, I, I don't remember right off, right off hand. I just, I know for a fact, full 420 in Pontiac. Um, that's really all I want to know off right off hand. All right. Well, here's the thing then. So tomorrow, fucking Trilogy is going to be in fucking Pontiac with fucking Twisted. And then they're going to be up in motherfucking. Oh, tomorrow, Seattle. No, yeah, Pontiac and 420. Tomorrow, Seattle. Tomorrow, Seattle, right? If you want to find the rest of that tour information, where can they find that shit, dog? Oh, on my Facebook. Yeah, so just go check Trilogy's Facebook. Facebook. Just type in motherfucking Trilogy. I mean, yep, exactly. Trilogy 2222, yep. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Is there a reason for the twenty-two, twenty-two? Again, twenty-two has always been my number, so I always put it after everything. Oh well, shit. Um, that's odd. Sorry, I just found out. Apparently, we just so everyone knows, the boss apparently doesn't have an interview tonight. So yeah. Um, so so it's going to be next week. He apparently had to reschedule just for everyone who. Oh, he got it. Uh, all right, hey, there was an, we had some technical issues. That motherfucker will be next week, and he'll be on and check in. I'm going to check in and call with that motherfucker, too, because that's the dude that's going to be, uh, that's Palmer, but isn't that the guy that's running the 607 <laughs> Gathering? Oh, right, my bad, man. We won't even get into that. We'll get into that shit later. Fuck that. We'll get back into Trilogy right now. Well, not back into Trilogy. That's just a little awkward. Maybe Sammy wants to do that. I don't know. It's <laughs> between them two, you know. Get in. Get my, I have a lube. Some. Yeah, it's easies. <laughs> and I got condoms too, dog. You don't even know. I sell condoms in this bitch. So you know what? For the love you. of God, man. I'll tell you what. What we're going to do is we're going to cut to a commercial, and uh, and then I'm going to cut to a motherfucking track. But I hit the motherfucking button and couldn't hear myself and fucking my shit up, right? So what I want to do is play Sick, right, by Trilogy. You got anything you want to say about this track, dog? Because I'm feeling a little sick in the head at the moment, I'm telling you. Yeah, man, you know, this song did this song for the people that just make me sick by the very thought of man, and uh, it's featuring Sammy. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I apologize if I'm making you slightly sick, dog. I'm slightly disturbed, and I have issues. I got love, too, though, dog. I'm just fucking deranged. But fuck it. It's no fucks given. Check it. It's sick, right? Because some motherfuckers make me sick, too. I agree. And it's just like, I can't fucking deal with you. So this is for all them motherfuckers that truly just die. And he's just like, fuck off, man. You an asshole, right? So fuck it. No fucks given. Listen to this. We'll be right back. This is Jay Bullet, motherfucker, Unknown Factor, in the house, no fucks given. Yo, this is the No Fucks Given Hour. I'm the Unknown Factor, still with my co host, Jay Bullet. Still got Bubbles yeah. with us, as well as our guest for the night, Trilogy. Who, like I said, man, this motherfucker's about to get busy with it. Like, because I just went on his uh, profile. If you go click on his profile pic, it shows that tour and all the dates he's got coming up. And, man, this dude's about to go to work. You don't even know. 
<laughs> what? What you don't even know? Fuck yeah, that. You can look at that profile pic. You don't even know all the work he's about to do. I know for a fact he's got some other shit coming up. So what are you doing right after that twisted tour, dog? Oh man, right after right after the twist tour, actually, man. Um, I'm home for a couple weeks, and May 13th, I'm actually going back to Michigan for the Crystal Lake Bloodbath. Uh, I wanted to say that too. I forgot about that. Uh. That's a that's an annual event. Uh, my boy uh, UGA throws, and uh, yeah, tell you what, I've been trying to get on this for a couple of years, and I'm finally going to be a headliner on it. So uh, May 13th in Michigan, that's going to be popping. And then um, after that, I'm going to be doing the six uh, six or seven gathering, and uh, pretty pumped for that. And uh, then my first national solo tour, uh, till I die tour, uh, going on 20 dates. So, uh, and that's going to be in August. It starts August 5th in Kenosha, Wisconsin. So I'm pretty excited about that, too. Hell yeah, man. So who's joining you on your tour for your solo tour? Um, this group from uh, New York, uh, 607. <laughs> so you're going to the 607 gathering, and then you're going on tour with 607. Yeah. That is oh, nice. dope, dog. That's all I've got to say. That's awesome. Yeah. And for real, like I said, at that 607 gathering, man, me and Snickers will link up with you. And we'll fucking, yeah, we'll get some other shit, dog. Yeah. Hell yeah, dog. And we'll get fucking 607. For real, just so y'all know, we'll get some shit with y'all, too. We're trying to fucking line up every artist we can, if it's possible, there. Which means me and Snickers are going to get worked to death. But fuck it, it'll be a hell of a time, and it'll sure as shit be worth it, dog. So I sure as shit as, uh, uh, intend to see you there. You know what I'm saying? Fuck yeah. I'm it wouldn't surprise me if it wouldn't surprise me if a couple of those six or seven guys were all uh, listening. To be honest with you, right now. <laughs> Hell yeah, hey, if you are, fucking, if you got a question or just want to give a shout out or something, fucking call in real quick, it's 401-283-569-95, pin, oh fuck, see here, <laughs> my wife spit this goddamn phone out, I swear, 401-283-5695-22389, listen, I can see it on this screen, but I'm fucking blind and I wear glasses and, you know, I just... <laughs> yeah, so I can't see it that well, you know. But hey, yeah, if y'all want to call in, fucking bullshit, that's fine. Got a question for Trilogy, you know, we're just showing, not doing shit. I'm trying to... Hey, and I, hey well, one one thing real quick, we can't just say guys because uh, Zanny Bars is a girl and she kills shit. She's in the group, guys, just want to point that out. Hell yeah, dog. Dude, I love, that's why I wanted to have Sammy on here, dude, because I heard her shit and I really liked it. Um... I love coming across, like, I'm amazed to see the female rappers I've come across that the level of skill they have, because I feel like you used not to see that as much, but there's way more of an example of it now in the rap game than there was, say, I don't know, five, yeah, five years ago. Yeah. Like, the main person I ever thought as far as female rapper would be uh, Missy Elliott, which is terrible. And I know she's probably like the first real main. But, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, 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 I know I throw it back. Right, there. right. But yeah, in the underground now, dude, there's a lot of female rappers I have seen that at the skill level they have. And the fact that a lot of them have the ability to sing as well as rap. And it just, it makes it really versatile and really interesting to hear. You know? So, hey, bullet, ask a girl. Oh shit! Um, all right, like uh, I'm right in the middle of transition right now. <laughs> oh look, oh, it's right in the middle of transition. I'm trying to look here. Damn dog, I'm running low. I'm running low on questions, man. Um, and that and that thump um, you heard was my notebook. I just threw it backwards like, fuck it. I don't even give a shit. No one's given. We're just going free ball from this point forward, Trilogy. What do you I, think? I got a question. Well, ask it. Well, I was trying to, but you didn't shut the fuck up. Well, of um, course. <laughs> What's your favorite food? Did you hear that, Trilogy? She asked what your favorite food was. Whoa. Trilogy. What the fuck? That was really weird. Um... Try and talk again. Say what? Oh, I don't know, dude. Yeah, I could not hear you right. Uh, Bubbles asked what your favorite food was. 
Oh, my favorite food, yeah, it's uh, tacos, uh, chicken tacos, steak tacos, depends where it's from, but definitely tacos. Hell yeah, do you like the pink one? <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite, I'm just saying. <laughs> you, know, but, you know, I'm just kind of wrong, what can I say, I just love the pink taco. Let's play, let's see, hmm, I want to play another game, and I want to play a game of Would You Rather. Right, and I'm curious because somebody I gave these options to. I think it was Messin, right? And it amazed me the option he took. Would you rather get a blowjob from a female predator, right, or have to have sex with a queen? Oh, wait, 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 wait! I have to have sex with what? A queen alien. A blowjob from Predator? <laughs> a female one. A female one, man. There are female ones. Yeah. Right. I mean, I hope it would be a male one. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, I mean, that's still dangerous, because them some jaws. What would you go with, Trilogy? I want to know. What, what do you mean? Would you rather have a blowjob from a female Predator, or have to have sex with a queen alien? Yeah, I'd rather get the... Oh, you'd rather... Ooh. I'd rather have the blowjob from... Dude, that's ballsy. Like a little TC. Yeah, do, yeah, a little T. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> now, 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 how do you, how do you, wow, how are you guys so sexist against female predators that you don't know they don't give good head? How do you know wow, that yeah, they do? Is what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm willing to give that. I'm willing to take that chance. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yo, I'm a freak, and there ain't much that I won't do, but um, I don't know if I'd be willing to take that chance. Yeah, I'd probably... Man, no, I don't know. Between the two options, I'd probably agree with Trilogy, though. Like, if you've got to take one of the two... Yeah, because... The, I mean, the queen, any way you take it, is just... It's a problem, you know? From the well, I mean, it don't show. It don't show the queen. You can play hit from behind, and it'd be all good. Yeah, until her fucking tail decapitated <laughs> you. Or, or, or the JJ drifts acid on your cock and burns you. <laughs> no, thank you. I'll take my chance with the teeth. <laughs> Fair enough. I, I happen to agree with trilogy. I do. Right uh, on. Right on. Very much so. Because that's, yeah, that's just fucking terrible shit. But whatever. I don't even give a <laughs> fuck. Right? So maybe oh, I got an acid finish. Oh, dog. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of another good question or two. Dog, I've ran through all my standard ones and pulled a couple out my ass trilogy, as I'm prone to do. Um, a run job from bullet or, tr uh, or, or unknown factor? Wait, what? No, fuck you. That, that that wasn't a question. She can you listen. Wow, listen, baby. Yeah, that was. Listen, how about how about this? Do you? No, I ain't even get. I'm. You're lucky. My kids in the room. Bubbles. First off, or I'd get. So I'm sorry. Fucking graphic right now, and you want to be mean? She thinks she's mean. Trilogy thinks she thinks she's mean. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know, dog. Have you had any beef in the industry in the time you've been in it? Uh, you know, a long time ago, when I was like local in Flint, I had stupid little beef. But you know, I mean, now, especially now that I'm older, I mean, no, I don't, I don't really beef with anybody. You know, if anybody wants to beef me, that shit just rolls right off my shoulder. It's never even beef. Like I got, I have haters, of course, but I don't call it beef because I don't fucking be and give me any time of day. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, fair enough. I get you on that, man. Just kind of brush it off the shoulder and be like, fuck you, dude. I got shit. Like, like you're looking at me. Like, you're looking at my back, motherfucker. I'm looking ahead of myself and trying to find what's this way. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely, I don't pay no attention to that shit. I don't, you know, feed into that shit. Hell yeah, man. That's, I agree with that. Do you, what's your opinion of the beef in the industry as far as, especially in the underground, man? Because just from when I've entered it, I've seen a lot of, I mean, from what I've seen, just, just dumbass arguments that escalated. And I 
I am not sure why they escalated other than dumbassery. Like, I've both heard about them online and seen them personally and all kinds of shit, you know? Like, why do you... You think it's just ego, or do you think it's something else that drives that in the industry? I, I, you know, it's it's got a lot to do with the ego, man. Uh, it's, yeah, it, it's, you know, people wanting to be what other people are doing. They, they see what other people are doing. They're wanting to be what they're doing. Other people thinking the other person is doing better what they're doing, so they want to be what they're doing, you know what I mean? So everybody's just butting heads, and, you know, the wrong thing said to somebody that they think they can trust, they go and say something to somebody, and then the wrong people hear about it, and then you have this stupid-ass beef over stupid shit. Man, but if you had it in an instant where it happens, where it's not even that something was said to somebody, it's that something was said to somebody at about a motherfucker and the motherfucker didn't even say it and it's just I mean it's just bullshit lies that causes issue between two motherfuckers yeah that's well, that's that's the that's the worst that's the worst kind right there is when the shit was never said and somebody like said the shit you know what I mean that the, the innocent stuff where somebody like didn't say nothing and then a beef starts that's ridiculous yeah 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 I know dude I kinda had a bit of an instance like that and then they wanted to get really, really, really goddamn shitty, and I was just like, whatever, man, that's fine. I'm going to go this way, and you go that way, and I'll do this. Have fun. You know, because it, it, it got really absurd, man. And it, I think the fact that I seen it so early on from when I started, it made me realize something really fucking quick, and it kind of... I don't know, man, I guess to a level it was kind of depressing, you know, because I've always, and man, I've never trusted anyone, like, it's just, and it's based on fucking past experiences I've had with other human beings that I don't trust people, you know what I'm saying, and if you listen to all these rappers, dude, every fucking rapper you ever listen to, all they fucking talk about is respect, and this and that, and that you know, don't bullshit, and then you see so fucking much of it, and I didn't understand that, to the point where when I had Supreme on, he was like, 75-80% of all rappers are fucking bullshit, right, what's, uh, let's, let's ask, what's your opinion, what number, what percentage of rappers do you think are just fucking mouth and nothing more? <laughs> I mean, I don't know me a lot of I I don't know enough per, people enough personally to you know say that you know uh, I heard a lot of people say to me that are a lot farther than a lot of people think they are that they look at me like you got to fake it to make it and I'm like what is that supposed to mean you know what I mean <laughs> and it's basically like just what you said you know the, how you know eighty percent he said are fake. And I think that's what they were getting at. It's like they're, they're basically faking the way along. And I, that's why I have, you know, what is that supposed to mean, fake it to make it? Uh, well, so, in other words, you can't be who you are and make it in this industry, is what they're saying ostensibly. No, what, what, I, what I think it is, is um, what, 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 what I think Supreme was saying when he said that is... Uh, well, just what I think he was saying when he said it is, uh, like, people are acting like they're bigger than they are. The further along they are, they got, like, you know, a lot of people are on Facebook paying for their views. They have, like, thousands and thousands of views. But then they do a show and there's ten people in the crowd, you know what I mean? It's, it's just that, it's, it's that type of shit that people are faking it to make it, you know what I mean? Because a lot of people, thought that that's where, like, Stitches came from and shit like that. You know, not taking nothing away from what Stitches has done, but he came from shit like that. You know, hey, some stupid little hey, shit. Or who, what's the other guy? Slim Jesus? Yeah. Another fucking guy that yeah, came out of nowhere with that shit. I you mean, know? I realize Trilogy. We all know he's not about that life. Yeah, that's why, why he and Supreme, Supreme, Supreme started to have this conversation, man, was based on the fact that he's getting ready to fight Stitches, you know? Right, right. Yeah. And, I mean, that's what really took that whole conversation because, obviously, yeah, that's how people look at Stitches, just, I, I don't know, because I've never really listened to Stitches music, though, you know, from what I understand, like, it's a lot of, it's, like, very gangster rappy, right? Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. something else. It's pretty gutter, yeah. Uh, yeah, and he was apparently never some shit like that, so whatever, I, yeah, I agree, man, I, 
I think that is a problem. But I don't, yeah, just motherfuckers rapping about shit that is not relevant to them. You know, like, uh, fuck, who, uh, it was No Emotion on Tuesday who said, who I think said it best. I ain't never gonna rap about old fucking rolling around in an escalator or a Cadillac because I don't fucking have one. You know? Yep. And I think you see a shitload of motherfuckers doing that for no goddamn reason. Oh, damn. Trilogy, you've been a really good fucking interview. I can't believe it's already almost 10 o'clock. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost my bedtime, man. I got a flight yeah. in the morning. I feel like I need to let your ass go so you can go to fucking sleep. Because, like I said, this motherfucker right here has got work to do tomorrow. And for that matter, so do I. I get my yeah. ass up and drive straight to the fucking studio. Yes, sir, I do, I do, man. Hell yeah, dog. Hell yeah. Yeah. Fucking, like I said, dog. Fucking, so I think we're going to wrap it up for the night. For real, to no fucks given out. You've, truly, you've been a great guest, right? But I know this motherfucker, like I say, he got to get on that tour. I got to fucking go tomorrow, and I got to hit the studio so I can wrap up my first CD and finally get that motherfucker out to you. I'm just playing with my kids all day, so. Hell yeah, dog. See, that's what's up. Take a day off. Fucking relax. Sometimes you got to do that, dog, because look, this week's about to get hectic, bullet, and you know it, you know? But truly, yes, sir, sir. shout outs you want to give before we cut out? <laughs> Trilogy? Oh shit. Trilogy you check out already? is no longer with us. Um Oh. I, I don't know. Hey, kidding, you ready to go to bed. Let me well damn. I wanted to see if Trilogy wanted to give any shout outs, right? <clears throat> you wanna give any shout outs? Uh definitely, man. I want to, first of all, you know, give a shout out to, you know, you, unknown factor and uh your wife Shell. Um, I want to give a shout out to DJ Snickers and, uh, Underground Wicked Radio for having us on here. Uh, Juggalo News for broadcasting us. Um, Danger Mafia Records family. Uh, DJ Flux. Uh, my weed man for keeping me sane. And last but not least, my mom for creating awesomeness. Hell yeah, that's what's up. Bubbles, you want to give any shout outs to anybody? Hi, y'all. Bullet, <laughs> Factor, Shell, Snickers, myself, since I'm never included in y'all shout out. Hey, first off, Bubbles, you can fuck off politely. You hear me? I don't give a shit, because I, I do this shit right all the time, right? I, I want to give a shout out to the entire Underground Wicked Radio staff. So, Bubbles, are you telling me you ain't staff? <laughs> Um, last time I checked the was. Okay, so shut the fuck up. That was a shout out to you. You expect me to say the name of every member of the entire staff every fucking time I do that? Are you shitting me? That is. But I'm the only one that's freaking calls in. <laughs> Look, Bubbles just wants her ego stroked, or maybe it's something else. I Why? Don't know. Why? But it's always, we love you, know. you Bubbles. All right, so I'm gonna give yeah, a shout out to Bubbles. I'll give a shout out to Bubbles for calling in because she always does call in, hang out with us, fuck around on a no fucks given out, right? I got to give a shout out to the boss, DJ Snickers. I also got to get a hold of that motherfucker so he can take over this motherfucking shit, right? Uh, I was thinking maybe Trilogy's going to call back in. I don't know if he's got any shout outs to give. I'm going to fucking, uh, well, I'm going to do those cut to his track till I die, right? Which I was hoping he could say something about, but fucking, I think that motherfucker wanted to go to bed because he's got work to do. Frankly, fucking because I got goddamn work to do too, man. I'm gonna finish my motherfucking album up and get you all some new unknown factor on this bitch as well, right? But for right now, check this out. Check out this motherfucking trilogy. No fucks given, y'all. Bang.